Fine trencher. Uh, basically, we'll start off with you need to make sure you check the fuel first. You need to do things in steps that we're going to do. Go by your manual. Make sure you've got at least, it needs to be three quarters on a tank, which is right about in here. You don't want to fill it all the way up because it will splash out in transit. Back on the back is where you check your oil out where this gray dipstick's at. Yep. Make sure you check your oil needs to be right there to the lip. Over in here, you've got your pull cord assembly. Always check it. Go ahead and pull it out all the way. All the way till it extends, it extends all the way out. Sometimes I even look down in here to make sure there's no burrs where it's going to break on a customer when they're pulling it. Over here's your air filter assembly. We'll go ahead and check it while we're over here. Let me pull this up. Let's stick that on the muff or we'll melt it. We're going to take it off. I usually kind of tuck these things into each other. Just set them out of the way so you don't lose your nuts and the cover. <laughs> we're going to take this also as well. And we're going to look through it and make sure we see sunlight and just tap it out. Make sure your rubber grommets is good on the top of this thing. If you don't, water can get into the air filter or down to the air filter assembly, down to the carburetor. And this engine will end up, end up not wanting to start next time. There's also a rubber ring when you're checking these filters can come out. Sometimes it'll stick to the bottom of the filter and it'll drop out without looking. Make sure you get this in there also. This is going to help keep some of that dirt and water out of the carburetor. And I'm going to check those to make sure they're clean while we'll assemble this back together. Take care. Take your wing nuts. Take them back on as well. Go ahead and start with the first one. Tighten that down. I like on the stump grinders and brush strippers, you want to make sure these things are level if they're on a trailer. Sometimes you have to put them on a jack or whatever you got to do to level them out. Make sure your engine is sitting flush level. Otherwise, you're going to get an improper reading on your fluids. Right here, we've got your it's going to be the hydro port. We're going to go ahead and check it. Make sure it's on this dot right here. See the dot? Right there. If it's not, we need to add oil. It takes a 46 grade hydraulic fluid. Over here in the front, I'll go ahead and go over the grease, grease fittings with you and show you where they're at. You've got one over here on the side. Sometimes you have to clean it out with a screwdriver or a pick. This is for your tensioning point. If you don't grease this, you can make it to where you can't tension this thing because that bolt's not getting greased to it. I generally grease it until I see grease come out of that bolt head. And you got another one on the top of this thing. Flex two. Flex two. You're gonna grease it right here on the top. And you're also gonna have a fitting down the bottom. Sure to get to it. Grease both of these fittings, all three of those. Right, chain tension, what you want to do is you want to double check right here on the center point, which is your low point. The chain is right here. You want it to be anywhere from two to three fingers. Maybe two, I recommend two and a half, two and a half to three, two and a half to three fingers right here. Also, another thing you want to do is when you're spinning this thing, you want to make sure your roller is moving. Make sure it's not seized up. You want movement in there. If, that's, if the roller seizes up, you basically end up wearing a flat spot from this thing wearing on, and it's going to throw your chain tension off. It's going to end up throwing a chain off on a customer. So you want to make sure that's moving around good. Up in here, most of the times when these things come back, it's been wet or muddy. You're going to get a bunch of stuff in here, debris, grass, the sewing. Make sure you clean this out real good because this stuff can get in your seals and end up causing a gear, causing a gear dope leak. Over here on the sides where we're going to check our gear dope. Taking a 
11 16 socket to get in there and take that out. The only way I recommend doing is pulling the bolt head out. Just gonna loosen this. This thing doesn't get dope in it. It's not gonna be lubricated, and what can happen is you can end up tearing the gearbox up, so it's very important to check this. Basically, if you can't see any fluid coming out, you may add some. It takes an 80 90 gear weight. Take our 80 90. This is the 80 90 gear weight oil right here. It's made by Kendall. We also other stuff have other stuff made by Kendall here, so you want to make sure it says special limited slip gear lubricant. We're gonna take that and put it in the port. I'm gonna squeeze it in there until it starts coming out. Go ahead and tighten that back up. Check your belts on this machine. I'm just gonna pull this outer housing off right here. Soft exposure belts. Check your belts for wear and burn marks or cracks and crevices and stuff like that. These look good. Back down the doors, I want to check these, make sure they're tight when clean these up. Both of these are tight. Slide all stuff back together.
going to go over next is the teeth on these things. You just want to kind of go down them and make sure they're all tight. Make sure you got a good tip on them. You go down. These carbides get worn off like this. It's time to change them. They'll start kind of curving in. Like a, it's like a little curve like that, like an oval, half oval. They'll need to be changed. These, these are called, uh, these are your root teeth. Basically, they're going to wear out faster than these sharks are going to wear out. You'll probably get about twice the life out of one of these. You're going to do these. Just kind of go down them, make sure they're all tight. If they need to be changed, go ahead and change them out. And make sure you put these little inserts right here in here back in when you put them back to make, make sure they don't fall down on the ground and get lost. Because what will happen is if you over tighten this, it's going to cause over time this thing to where it's going to catch in this one point in the chain from over tensioning it. Should be about 35 in the rear. about 25 to 30 in the Sometimes you end up having to spin the tire to get to it. Thank you.